Hello, Allie Brown. Welcome to the Brave Entrepreneur Podcast. I am your host, Jenna Rodriguez. Entrepreneurs are leading the way and creating a whole new level of possibility. Each week, listen in to hear how brilliant entrepreneurs share their brave secrets. Entrepreneurship is not the easy way. It is the brave way. Now let's get our brave on. Welcome to the Brave Entrepreneur. How are you today? I'm so excited to be here. This is fun. Yes, I I am more than thrilled. Um, Like I was telling you before the show, I have been, you have been on my radar. I probably haven't been on your radar as long as as you have on mine. And and it's just really uh, like, reconnecting with a girlfriend that I've, I have watched grown and change and shift for over almost 10 years. So I'm just really excited to, to share you with our audience and, and meet you face to face and, uh, or at least as, as in person as we can <laughs> these days. But um, this has been really uh, exciting for me to, to feature you here and, and would love to have you share, you know, kind of who you are and what is it, the work that you do in the world for anybody that's new to you. Yeah. Well, I've been through a few chapters, which you're aware of. You've been with me on a few of those. Yes. (laughs) I think actually when we, when we probably met at my shine event, that was the event. I think I brought, I brought in the, the male models that we dress them as cowboys to uh, the coaching applications. (laughs) It was a different time. Let's just say that. So today, you know, today we had a lot of fun, those events, man. Um, And I'm glad we did it back then. Right. So right. Couldn't do it right now. We had, we had a ball. So yeah. right now, um, right now, I am a high-level advisor for women entrepreneurs who are in the seven and eight-figure ranges. That niche specifically is my sweet spot, and I'm founder and CEO of the Trust, which is my new network for women entrepreneurs who are also at those levels. That's where I play now. Yeah, I love that, and I uh, and I've been really excited to see you unfold the trust. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What, mainly, what was the inspiration? Where did that idea come from? Yeah, well, you know, in the grand timeline of women in business, everyone has to realize how new this all still is. And so there's a lot of things out there and structures and organizations that have not caught up to where we're at right now. The mm-hmm. technology we use, the attitudes we have, the way that life is not so compartmentalized, you know, as, yeah. as compared with like old types of careers. and. And when I reached a certain level in my business, um, and then also was coaching all these clients at these levels, um, I'll tell you that exactly how it happened. Actually, I had a few clients who came through and typically clients work for me. Usually they'll stay with me about two years for that high level advisory. It's a big investment. So it's not, you know, usually it's like a year or two and they're like, great, this is great. They're like, now, where do I go now? I'm like, well, you know, and and I, there's two different levels of networking out there. Typically you have the everyone's welcome, one size fits all, big organizations out there for women. I'm talking about women in particular. Um, Or you have these super high level, like you have to be invited, win an award, be at crazy revenues, have investors, these circles that I was very lucky to be in this bridge place with my business several Mm -hmm. years ago, Inc. 500 and EY, winning women, all this stuff. And I became privy to these levels. And it was like a whole new world. I'm like, wow. I'm like, these women need to know these women. Yeah. But I can't let them in here. I can't get them in here. How do we bring this quality to these women um, right now? And and that's where, you know, do you ever have that idea where like, everyone's like, well, you should do it. I'm like, I'm too tired. Like I have twins. I have like all all this stuff's going on. And it it kept coming back. It kept coming Mm -hmm. back. It kept coming back. And finally, I'm like, you know what? I think this is the time. And um, I'll tell you though, it's been an interesting year because the whole premise of the trust was it was going to be based on live events. Right. So, you know, we had a strong start at the end of last year. We had a strong start to the beginning of this year. I had this um, very, I would say, you know, compared to how we all used to do the launches and stuff, this has felt very, uh, a bit agonizingly slow to me because of how particular we're being in growing the group, who we're taking, who we're not taking. And then we got hit with COVID. So um, it's been a year for me of, you know, letting go, which I'm not good at, um, processing a lot. What's going on? Was this the right year to even do this? Coming back full circle around to feeling like this was the perfect year Mm. to do this. 
because of the conversations these women are having behind closed doors that you can't have online. Like mm. either either aren't possible or aren't being allowed. That's all I'll say. Like, like right. I think you guys were get where I'm going. Just all this weird shit going. Everyone's going bat shit. We're recording this in October. I'm just ready to like shut the laptop and open it at Christmas right. if I could. Skip over um, it. And just work with my clients privately, right? And let, let me know if anything's happening. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, um, <laughs> in the end, it's been, it's been an, a completely empowering year in the end for me. It just was, uh, wasn't quite what I envisioned. And I think that's good for people to hear, you know, because we all have that plan on the wall that literally cross out, put 2021. That's kind right, of what right. we did. Yeah. You know, I, I love that. Um, that awareness that you had that, you know, letting go is not always easy, but it is sometimes necessary. And, and so speaking of that, and I also heard, you know, the word perfection, meaning everything that we, sh that does show up, that comes up for us, that, um, that reveals itself is some form of perfection, not perfectionism, but perfection in this is what it was meant to be. And, and so I feel like that's the reminder for people to really anchor themselves in the perfection of what this is, you know, and, um, and I, I too, I'm on the roller coaster. I don't let go very easily either. Um, and, and I wanted a particular way. I expected a particular way, but I speak a lot about ego and essence, right? Our higher self driving the, the boat versus our egoic self, um, you know, keeping us in our limitations. And, and I think one of the biggest limitations this year for people is not letting go and, and holding on to this, this is not okay. And this is, you know, it's kind of like fighting and resisting all the way through it. And yeah. um, what would you say to people or women, especially that are resisting the way it is? You know, it's interesting. I'm going to give, I'm going to share with you an exercise we actually did at the last meeting that kind of came out of, um, it kind of evolved as we went. And, and I, I love being in a room this size, you know, for this event in particular, not everyone wanted to travel or could travel. And I was okay with that, of course, sure. but we still had like 17 women there. I mean, I was blown away and they're like, yeah. no, we're going to be there. And because I know there was so much on people's minds, I didn't feel like we could go into a, let's plan your best 2021, right? <laughs> like, like, right, like, right. We had to clean out the closet a bit. So I got a flip chart out and a marker, which is my favorite way to teach. This was day one. We had no AV. It's just me flip yes. chart and these amazing women. This is what I, I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I start, I said, you know, what are, what are you experiencing right now? What are you mm -hmm. feeling right now? what's yes. pissing you off this year? Cause I, I mean, I shared, I was pissed. I was, it was just pissed. I'm like, no, no, this isn't the year for this to happen. No, you know, yeah, this was not planned. so yeah. we, we, we ended up making this huge list of everything from categories that have been disrupted, just that we're observing to liberties we're fearful now may disappear in our personal lives based on how we see right. the government work. I mean, just everything. Wow. And all these women too, from different political ideologies coming together and, and sharing their concerns, yeah. which, I think is a magic that happens in person, you know? So we just, it was like this exhaustive list and then, and then of stuff that pissed us off and made us angry and made it a shit year for some people and blah, blah, blah. And then I ripped it off, put it on the wall. Okay. What's None. the gift? What are the gifts in this year? Mm, yes. That's the next. And then it started kind of tentatively. <laughs> you know, the room's kind of quiet. I don't, I can't think of one. <laughs> They're like, well, you know, I learned to do the thing on Zoom, right? Like everyone took their vet and put it on Zoom. Like, oh, okay, Zoom. And it, but man, it just, it actually started growing. There are people mm -hmm. that reconnected with family they'd never connected with. There are some people who decided, like myself, to, um, you know, who, who thought about homeschool in the past, but I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to be homeschool mom, you know? But right, then right, right. I'm like, you know what? Let's, let's do it this year. This is the great time to do it. And that's been a huge gift seeing how my children learn and being aware of what they're learning and helping them learn what I think they should be knowing at this age. And, yes. and it turned into this beautiful, beautiful blessed list. So I think it's actually an exercise that you could do individually too. Just let yourself go there. You've got to write this out and process it. There are a lot of people who are, um, we're very affected this year in their business or in their personal lives that um, I think we didn't get, you know, everyone's like, this is what pissed me off too. And you saw it. when all this stuff hit, everyone's on social media, just like, see the bright side in all of it. Right? Like you, these people that are, um, what do they call that? That's a term for it. It's not. Opti oh, optimistic, no, optimism. No, something like that. It was like this toxic positivity. Do you know what I'm talking about? Some phrase that was going around and I totally knew what it meant. It, mean, <clears throat> it means like, 
yes, we want to end up there, but you have to process. Yes. There was a lot going 100%. on this year. I mean, the business level and then the, the women who were handling the home stuff and then the kids stuff and then health and then, you know, grandma and like, yeah, let, you got to You got to let process this. You have the right to be pissed about 2020. Yeah. Like it's okay, but let's move your, let it move through you. Let it move through you. And then where are you going to land now? Right. And I had to do this personally for myself, you know, where yeah, we're all like, too. what, what is, what is this? What's going on? So yeah. that's, that's what I would say. It's the best place to end up right now is looking at, you know, are those gifts, but you often, you can't get really get there unless you clean out. I, I so agree with you. And I've done probably 10 of those sessions for myself. <laughs> I think every day I'm still looking for the gift, right? And yet I know, I know there's gifts there, right? And I, I feel like people, like you said, they kind of start with the surface answer, um, you know, but if you really look at and acknowledge yourself and give yourself permission to not like it, right? And go to the ugly, go to the ugly shadows that are lingering in the background mm, and like, like dig them out, be with them, process them, like you said, I think that is the trick. Um, and, you know, per se, or the, you know, and, and that's the opportunity so that you can get to the gifts. And you're right. I, I, I got sick of <laughs> seeing all of the, I'm like, I'm trying to be positive. Yes. <laughs> but let's get real here too. And that's what I love about you. You're always real about it. Do you remember in your mind to, you're like, what I really want to comment here. That, no, no, no. And then you're like, no, 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 no. Don't write that. Like, don't, yes. don't, don't write that. They filter, like filter, that. filter, filter, filter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's been like that kind of year. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think that I think filtering to some degree is okay, but I also think there's a place for us right now to be really honest. Well, honest yes. with ourselves, honest with the public, honest with, you know, our families, our children, right? Um uh tell me again how old your twins are. They're seven oh, right now. Seven. Yeah. Um gosh, yeah, I remember seven. Yeah, my 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 youngest is uh, 15, right? So oh my gosh. A different level of things. But, um, but having conversations, whether it's a seven year old or a 15 year old and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and just being able to help them process, let alone the adults in our life, right? Coping mechanisms, uh, you know, I'm not sure we're taught young enough. So uh, I, so I think that's also an opportunity We're we're parenting, hopefully parenting in a different way. Um, yeah. you know, this year, but, um, so the other thing that, uh, I wanted to, to kind of dive deeper into is, um, you know, it's like adversity is not new to us, right? This is just another adversity. And how has this adversity been different for you than, you know, I know your story, you know, 20 bucks in the bank or, um, you know, uh, you know, challenges along the way, you've shifted your business, like you said, many chapters, what's this, what's different about this one than something in your past? Um, that's a good question. I, I think because, um, my metrics for success have shifted. Mm. And in a, in a way that's made it easier because I know that, you know, typically in past times and for many people, when you're launching something, it's a numbers game, right? right? And so you're looking at, we want this many people and this many conversions. And it's, it's about getting as many people as we can into this thing. This has been something so different that um, I haven't had anything to model. Mm, right. I haven't had a proven past model to just keep working. So that takes a lot of extra energy when you have a new business, a business plan that you now need to completely change, new circumstances, uh, things that change by the day as far as people's um, eligibility to even attend things. Right. It was, it was nearly impossible to plan. And so, you know, crossing that off and then say, okay, what are we doing in June? <laughs> you know, kind of going back there and taking it step by step. But, you know, I want to bring up something else, John, which is interesting that I know, you know, you ask people a lot of times um, what their most, they feel their hardest decision ever was and what their bravest moment ever was. Yeah. It, it was probably, when I was thinking about this, going through the notes for the show, it, it probably was the, when I decided to, um, I don't want to use the right word, disassemble my previous business and my previous yeah. model. And so, you know, my, my, my business evolution has always followed where I am personally, which is not 
easy or maybe even a thing for other people to do and that's okay but when i'm reaching a point that i know that like i will say this year you know when i'm reaching a point that i know that like this is where i'm supposed to be i see it i feel it i taste it why have the circumstances not caught up right there's this disconnect that you start getting like it wasn't this was supposed to happen this way yes when you're so clear though on who you are and what your values are and what you want to create and who you don't care about that's when it actually gets easier in a hard year i won't say it wasn't like an easy it wasn't an easy year but um it was interesting like once i processed everything going on i knew i could navigate it and and be okay Got it. um there you know decisions i've made have always when they've gone badly is when i'm not feeling into who i am early enough Mm-hmm. And I'm following other models and other metrics and yes. things that don't matter to me. It was an interesting conversation this morning. I have my team here. By the way, we're worried we're going to get reported because I realized there's like six cars in the driveway. And like, <laughs> <laughs> we just really, and then I have a tutor here for the kids. I mean, it's just, it looks like we're having like a giant bash or something. I'm like, no, this is what it takes to run our home and our business. <laughs> this <laughs> you know, is all these people here. So we were having this discussion that um, I decided to to, um, get a very controversial guest on my show, Glenn Bishop Radio, that's going to air this week. Awesome. And um, someone who, um, in my opinion, is just sharing a different perspective on things. You know, I think this is what shows should be for, especially podcasts. Like, I have guests all the time I don't agree with. (laughs) But I I think they're amazing. And I'm like, well, that's a different perspective. But I haven't thought of it that way. And I may not even agree with that. But like, Thank you for helping me yeah. understand that or see that, right? Absolutely. And I had someone say to me um, on a DM last night, say, literally, and I, I think I've already sworn, can I swear again? Um, <laughs> she, she literally wrote me and said, you are fucking brave. Like, this woman's associated <laughs> nice. with cancel culture and stuff. And I, you know, there's that moment of going like, gosh, is this the right thing? Should I be doing this? And then I was talking with my team this morning, and I said, here's where we're at that is so great. I said, I've never accepted advertisers. I've never accepted sponsors. Right. We're not indebted to anyone's opinion except the people who are my clients. Mm -hmm. And I am now in the delicious place of having a business that is completely and only aligned with who I am and the women I want to serve. And that means I don't have to pander to the, the, the mass market. And it was this big realization this morning that and how powerful that is. And that that won't affect how I make money, how I do business. In general, I'm just, I can have even more fun with my show now and get some really interesting people on. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so it, that, it's interesting because some people would see that as like a very brave move. And, right. and, um, and it was the interesting observation right now. Right now, I think people are scared to be brave in many categories. Like, you know, what they say, who they tell things to, who they actually are sharing their real opinions with. Yeah. I just want to share that as it's part of your theme. It was perfect and so, so timely. (laughs) Um, And, and I think that's, that is the kind of the, the nature of what's going on. I, I, in, in June, when the, the, um, uh, George Floyd situation went on, you know, happened and, well, and I forgot about all that too. That was yeah, <laughs> like, just big, list big. all the ways, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I felt that same, uh, you know, how do I stay true to myself? How do I speak what is true for me and not buy into the noise that was going on? And, uh, and it was that week was actually one of the most stressful weeks I've had this year. Uh, because I knew I wanted to speak up and say something to my community, to the people listening to me, you know, and, and the people I care about. And yet, how do I stay in my zone, right? My right. truth. And, uh, and I could hear my own ego want to defend and fight and like, you know, and say things that I, you know, kind of, it's almost like resembling the noise that was out there. And I said, I just kept the noise to myself until I could get clearer on and trust myself, um, uh, enough to speak my truth and, yeah. you know, in my position and, you know, in my position is, is that, you know, we have so much ego going on in the world. That's what's creating so much div- divisiveness. 
and yeah. separation. So ego itself is separation. And so how do we come back to the oneness that we're all fighting? Like we're all fighting for the oneness. Yeah. You can't have yeah. oneness with the fight, right? You know, what's interesting about that, um, that whole month, right? Which for anyone with a public platform, and, and I've been on social since its inception, as you probably have. Right, right. And um, I, I believe, you let me know what you think. I believe that was the first time those of us with a platform felt or experienced or directly got an undeniable pressure to say something yes. about this event in a certain way. And I think this is the distinction that's interesting. Suddenly, you know, and I'm like taking a week offline. I'm like, what did I miss? You know, and then... <laughs> And people are, um, you know, there, there was anger that something wasn't said yet. And I, I was like, well, this is interesting because um, it, I just think a lot of people and saw what was happening too, to people responding the wrong way, like, like not in a good way or the way yeah. that, and so I think, you know, we were, it was an interesting time though. It really, it, it brought to light the pressure of those of us um, online now to feel like we have to be online all the time, right. responding to everything, and that people will look at your feed and then judge who you are by that. 100%. And, and I think it's, it's something that, um, and if we want to go down the rabbit hole a bit, if you believe that there are people and things making some things happen right now Manipulate. in the world, that we are, um, it's, we're being divided on purpose mm. because in our unity, we have power. Yeah. And, and I'm not talking about even just what's happened this year, just generally overall, like the us not being able to gather in person, us being forced to um, talk about things online. I mean, it really hit me at our recent meeting for the trust. There were conversations happening in that room. You would never see or experience online because it just, it's, it's not conducive. It's not a, a platform that's conducive to having these conversations in right. person is when you're looking at someone going, wow, I've never even thought of them saying it that way. Like I never took in, um, the, the point in that way, or I didn't know she had that experience. She never shared that with me in our forum, you know, but here we are having lunch and hearing that she had that. Now I totally understand her perspective. It's just so different. It's very it's so different. different. So yeah. I, I was encouraging everyone to, um, you know, remember that like this, this whole social world is not the end all, like you will continue to exist when this blows up and it will at some point if it's not controlled by the government. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, you know, but, um, <laughs> No, I don't mean to go there, but this is the kind of week I'm having. I'm just like, oh my gosh, what's happening? I'm all for it. Yeah, go for what's it. What's happening to the world? Where, um, you know, I have a love hate thing with social and this online stuff. And, yeah. you know, I got started when you can send a few emails and make a hundred grand. <laughs> I mean, it was the day. The day I didn't have to deal with people. We didn't have a phone number on the website. You, you would just sell stuff, and yeah. I'd go rollerblading on the beach. I was single in LA, and and now we're dealing with this shit and a yeah. family and COVID and like, it's, you know, it's just a new world. And so talk about brave. I mean, right now, right now, like it's, I, I think anyone right now continuing to run a business, navigating all this stuff, like it's pulling out what you're made of. People are really yes. underestimating what this is taking right now. And really honor yourself and that, that bravery that, that you have had in, in any of these categories or all of them. Yeah. And I think that comes back to the acknowledgement process, right? Get get the shadows and the shit out of the way, but then stop and acknowledge yourself for how much you're actually processing and facing and and dealing with. And you know, from you know, from kids to to it's just like I I walk out in the streets and we have masks on, and I said, what is the most basic subliminal message that that's presenting? And fear and silence is what I get, what I receive. And so my job is to come back to my essence, come back to my higher self and go, that's not where, that's not going to be what I buy into, right? Like I have to choose. And I think that's um, like, like I'm with you and, you know, I think there's bigger things going on behind the scenes, you know, and um, the more we become conscious, the more we become aware, the more we educate ourselves, the more we turn inward, then we will find our unity. Then we will find our trust in ourselves and in the world that is a good thing, right? Because I feel, you know, it's just blown up that everything is so bad and negative and the world is ending. And yet I don't, I don't believe that's what's actually happening 
in the the quiet There's moment. supposed to be a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel at some point. Everyone, yes. you know, everyone's talking about ascension yes. and 5G. And that's all great. I don't see it now, but it, I know it's coming. <laughs> I don't see it either. I mean, I'm, I get glimpses. I'm getting I'm, glimpses. I feel it sometimes. I'll yes. post that. I'm like, oh, I think I'm getting the 5G ascension stuff. And then, yep, yep, yep. Um, you know, I do... I, I think this is just, um, well, you know, spiritual people call this a quickening right now. So it's everything right. that needed to be corrected and or healed is coming up. I mean, in Agreed. the span of a year, basically, like, or a few yeah, years. like lightning speed. It, it, lightning insanity speed. stuff that are, we were never designed to even be able to handle. We're handling though. And that shows how um, adaptable we are. It shows how quickly we can evolve. Those yeah. of us who know what's going on. But it requires bravery. It requires, there's like a crisis of courage is yeah. how I heard it described. And um, of people scared, just that. scared to give opinions on things, scared to share things with their neighbor. Um, right. You know, right. and so I think we're, we're going in a whole different direction than I planned on maybe nope, you have either. this is good. This is but what I mean. <laughs> brave, brave is the, th it's the theme of 2020. It's, yeah. it's um, and yeah. You know, and, and here's the thing too, there's gonna to be people who disagree with you and maybe if they're still your friends later, you just say, listen, let's get through this. Let's get through this and, right. and we'll, let's reconnect in the spring and have lunch. And we may disagree on the mask thing. We may disagree on what the government's doing. Maybe we're different political parties. And like sometimes, you know, you have followers or friends that you're gonna disagree, but imagine, I, I think it's the women. If we learn to have these conversations with mm -hmm. each other and come from different places, that's what's going to change everything. The men have been trying for thousands of years and they can't do it. I think we're the ones. If we can gather, this is what I'm, I'm putting together. I think if we're kept from gathering, we go into social media e e e mode. Mm -hmm. right? Right. When we come together in a room and I'm looking you in the eyes and like giving you a hug and saying, how are you? Yeah. And tell me about that. And that's interesting. I haven't thought of it that way. And, you know, I, or I may not agree with that or, but it's these, wh wherever you can gather, 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 gather. I love that. You know, and I always say there's three, there's only three types of conversations at any given moment. And there's, it's either ego to ego, ego and higher self and someone else, you know, someone speaking from that higher self and letting the ego share whatever it needs to puke all over you kind of thing, or it's higher self, higher yeah. self, and heart to heart. And, and I, I'm with you. I think those gatherings allow, even if it starts out with ego to ego, it, it ends up in heart to heart because um, it's very easy to live ego to ego on social media all day long, right? And the more separation, the more judgment and, you know, all of, all of that can, is perpetuated. And I've actually gotten a little quieter on social media just in the, like the last month. Um, and I do a lot from my, the best I can. <laughs> I do a lot from, am I inspired to be, you know, online? Am I inspired to do this video? Am I inspired to do this podcast? What, you know, come from that inspired place. And if I feel like that's just not where I'm meant to be today, then I, I do my best to, to allow that. And, yeah. you know, I, and I subscribe to Gus, God, universe, source. So I'm like, <laughs> let Gus speak to me. Let, you know, Gus work through me because that's what's going to elevate our, our consciousness and our gathering, our connect collectiveness. And if we don't have that, we just have ego to ego going on. Right. And yeah. which is pure separation. And yeah. that's what and, I'm. And thinking. you know what? That's a good point. You know, if you guys are, you can shut it off. Like we all forget, we feel like we're going to lose our place in the world or something yes. if we shut this thing off for a few days. And, and, um, I mean, that's what teams for too. My team will keep stuff going. I'm like, you know what? I'm feeling very sensitive today and, um, yeah. or, and, or hormonal or whatever the hell's going on at 49, right? Sensitive. Whatever we don't, or this is five, five we're getting fried by 5G. I don't know. <laughs> like, right, right. Who knows, who knows why we're feeling this way, but there's some days I'm just like, I, I'm not up for this today. You guys drive the social and, or we could take a break. I won't disappear if we shut it off. Right. No, right. And I think you, you really pointed that out that like people need to rediscover things offline right now, books yeah. and going outside and Nature. being with their family. And I mean, it's, um, it's just a crisis. Jeez, we're hitting a lot of topics. We are like, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> No, I love this. I love this. And one, mm -hmm. one other thing that I was, I was hearing, I'm, I was like taking notes is, um, you know, to, to not only shift from this, this experience we're all having, and I believe we're creating our experience. I mean, I, I want people to know that we get to choose our experience of this, of, of what's going on, um, right? It's not happening to us, happening for us. You know, you get to choose how you, how you perceive it. 
And, and so I believe that we're, we're creating and experiencing a new container, as I call it, um, you know, of, of who we have to become, who we have to be as leaders, who we have to be as, um, you know, the, the influencers in the world. And, and so personally, I would love to know, how did you create the container that you're in right now? Meaning, you know, just the level of success, because you've come from a place of not having to having um, to trust maybe, and I'm curious, I don't, I don't want to assume, but it may be having the, the trusting in the external versus trusting in the internal self. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, or, or can you kind of dive deeper into that a little bit about what it's taken for you to shift into the container you're in? When you say, so I'm still not clear in container, is that more of the, your, your personal solid capacity, capacity maybe is the better word like your capacity to be where you are and create what you have. I mean, it's been 20 years. So that's what I have to tell you that I, um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I wish I had this brain at 29. You know what I mean? Like, like I just like, it, it's definitely evolved. You care less what people think. Um, it's a hard thing to do at a young age, you know, it, and I, I think um, the more, the more practice you put into that, I will say, you know, when I was young, though, I always was a little anti-authority. I always, like, mm -hmm. if you told me to stand here, I'd be like, why? You know, I could stand over there, like, at the DMV, <laughs> cause trouble. You know, like, I don't want to stand that line. I just um, went to the DMV yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> stand here and say, like, no, I want to go in this line. Like, what do you, you do? So um, I've always had a little problem with that. And so being an entrepreneur was, was the natural thing. I think where, um, where I had to build a lot of courage is just seeing what... Um, when all the data around you is pointing one way yeah, and everyone you see is doing a business in this direction and everything you're getting advice on is on this, but you're like, I want to go over here yeah. and this is all I'm feeling and this is what I'm knowing and this is my truth. That's fucking bravery. Yeah. Like that's when, right. and so when people, people think the biggest leap was maybe building the business or when someone said no or, um, you know, it, it, it's just, it, it's more those moments that no one really knows about, but they see what you're doing and they don't understand. They're like, what is she doing? This right. thing was big and this was her whole thing and future. Now I'm doing this. This is where I'm called. This is my sure thing. They will never understand your sure thing when you feel yes. that. Yes, 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 um, exactly. And then, and then really it, it's come from the universe or God will meet you, but you, they're going to meet you halfway. Yeah. And so you have to then, and this is the part I don't like, I would like to just manifest a large sum of money. I would like to just manifest like a thousand women in my group, right. but there's work to be done. Right. Yeah. And, and that the, the, the phone calls, the leaps, the things that may be uncomfortable, you know, asking for help today, which I'm, I'm not used to it because I just never did. I never had the chance often when I was doing something yeah. new, but today I called someone I knew saying, listen, I, I really need your insight on something we're trying to do next year. And I haven't seen it done this way. So I want your opinion on what you did. And, and it was so helpful. And she was like, call anytime. And I'm like, why don't I do this more? You know? Yeah. So um, it's that action combined with um, knowing that you may be on a completely different path than everyone else. And that's where you're supposed to be. Those are the hardest moments. Yeah. Because um, I even had to stop going to events of certain types. I had to stop associating with certain people who were lovely people, but I would get sucked back into that world and suddenly be, you know, I'm at tables and everyone's name dropping and talking about their list size. And I'm just like, guys, this was so 15 years ago for me. Like I'm here doing something different. So it's, um, and it only comes from practice. It's that confidence and inner knowing that's, it's a, it's a long answer for no it was so landing perfect. there okay <laughs> it was beautiful and and it's interesting um uh i i actually last year was kind of my rite of passage of that um i mean i've had many but last year was huge i completely flipped everything on its lid i canceled business partnerships not because of them but because of me because you know it's like my trust and knowingness and I shifted the lead, kind of what I led with in my business. I even moved us from Texas to LA, California. Right, to, to, Everyone's going the other way. I know, I know. <laughs> that point taken, right? It's like do what's on the opposite of what everybody's doing. Um, because there's something, I, I was literally just, it was a God thing. This, I know it doesn't make sense to people. 
I, it doesn't fully make sense to, to me and my husband, but that I'm doesn't like, make sense to me at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. Based on current events. I know. You know well, everyone's going, everyone's leaving LA and going to Texas, but yeah. there is a creative, there's a creative energy in LA there, that's yes. undeniable. Yes. And my husband's a musician. So that was part of it, right? There was Perfect. creative energy and it's working. It's working. And so you've had a lot of transition the last of transition. few years. Trusting. And it all came from trusting what, what was right for me right now. And like having to, and I've, I've, I had to let go of, I think to, to anchor the point you made is the brave comes in knowing where you want to go um, from yourself out, meaning not like somebody told you to, and then being willing to let go of all the stuff that can't come with you. And, um, and like you said, giving up, you know, the, the certain events that you no longer be belong in, you know, like it just isn't resonating anymore and being okay with that. I think that's been the hardest thing for me is like really getting okay with following my own lead. And, um, and on that note, I think that's what you are, um, the example of, and, and I've always believed that. So I've, I have followed your journey and, and feel so honored to share your thought leadership today because, um, that's what we need more of is people willing to be right. that brave, not just, like you said, not just, you know, shifting from corporate to, to business or, and those are all great. Those are kind of the first steps. I, you and I both did it. Right. And, um, but I think there's a deeper brave that we've got to access that, um, is really going to elevate the, the consciousness of the world, let alone our own, you know, our own unit, our own family units, et cetera, and our clients that we serve, but also, um, you know, that's where the brave mastery comes in play. And, and you're right. I love that. So thank you so much for being here. This has been, um, honestly, you've made my day. <laughs> so uh, thank you. I, I enjoyed this conversation. I wish, I wish I, I think I need a different type of show now. Like we would get really edgy. I need like oh, a gosh. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's uh, go there. <laughs> let's go there. I mean, I'm telling you and, uh, and I appreciate that. So real quick, what's the best way to, uh, for people to connect with you? Yeah. Three things. So Glambition Radio is my, that's my thing. Like that's where everyone listens to you. Everyone finds out about me. It's a fun name, but a very intelligent show. If you listen to it, it we is. really have incredible conversations with women. This is not boss babe BS. It's really good conversations. It is. Um, the second is Instagram's my happy place lately. It seems less toxic. So I'm there and a lot more probably than I should be until I can't, but <laughs> Instagram on there. And then alliebrown.com is where um, if you get on the email, you'll know about upcoming events, what we're doing with the trust, what we're doing with them. Um, I can't wait to have events again. I'm thinking next year even of doing um, like a type of a tour with some mm. cocktail events or something. I'm ready to get yeah. out again. Yeah. Um, so, so if you get on the list there, you'll know what's coming up. Amazing. Well, I'm, I'm waiting for the day that, that uh, I can join your trust. So that's, that's amazing. I love We'd that. love to have you. And I have one final question. I always close the show with this. Um, is if this was your absolutely last interview, your last stage, your last um, kind of message to the world, what would no pressure, be? no pressure. <laughs> uh, just imagine, feel the emotion. Mm -hmm. like, wow, this is my last chance to say something, right? We're putting it in the time capsule. Um, what would that message be to the world? Mm, the message is simply say it. Mm, beautiful. Simple. Interpret and that however you want. That means something <laughs> different, but it means just say it, say yeah. it what's in there. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love you. Thank you, Allie Brown. I'm so honored and, uh, and I can't wait to, to see what you do next. So thank you so much for being Thanks. here. Thanks. We'll stay in yeah. touch. Bye. Uh, would love to. And for everyone listening, if this added value, please share, please review, please speak to us and, uh, and let us know your thoughts. And until next time, let's get our brave on.